Oh man, welcome back to the Watch It With McQueen channel, man. Yesterday we are back, y'all, man. Look, man, it looks like we're about to, you know what I'm saying, start skyrocketing the way that we had planned. Aqua Force, you know what I'm saying? We're slowly growing back on this channel, you know what I'm saying? We running it up, we going crazy. If you are here and you're then you're watching right now and you're not subscribed, you better join now, man, because we're about to blow up on this goddamn channel. There's not a damn thing you can do about it except join us because we're lit. The most lit, ignorant, goofy team on the goddamn tube. That is the Aqua Force, man, and we're on the second channel going crazy. Uploading videos every goddamn day, multiple times a day. So make sure you guys go down and hit the like button now and subscribe to the goddamn Watching McQueen channel, man, because we'll be posting quality, funny-ass content brought to you by yours truly. Okay? Um, We have 10 worst shark attacks ever recorded. Now, I hate sharks. You know what I'm saying? I hate anything that kills you for no reason. Okay? Don't sit here and come to me and be like, no, they're beautiful creatures. They won't do anything if you don't bother them. Nah, screw that. Okay? Sharks seem to just like killing niggas just because. Okay? So they can kiss my ass. Bees, wasps, or any type of insect. You know what I'm saying? Snakes. Anything. Anything that just kills niggas for no reason just because it's just, just because. You can kiss my ass, you know what I'm saying? I'll hit a button and kill your entire species, if I could. Do you know what I'm saying? For real. But uh, sharks is one of these. One of, sharks is one of them. And they're ugly as hell. Don't nobody want to look a little ugly ass sharks? You know what I'm saying? And why the hell is niggas going inside of their territory? That's another thing I don't get. I bet you everything. I bet you anything, man. And this is not, this is not racist at all, Okay. Like I love my whites, I love my white people, man. You know what I'm saying? But there are a lot of dumb, a lot of dumb white people. They're just like there's a lot of dumb black people and a lot of dumb Asian people. Okay, but the dumb thing that the white people do is they go, they take their ass in in, in, in in territories like this, and they wonder why they get their ass beat by these damn animals, bro. Why? Or I guarantee you, every single one of these dudes is white. I guarantee you. Let's go ahead and watch, man. Sharks are terrifying creatures and are undoubtedly apex aquatic predators. We're no match for sharks in their natural habitat, and these 10 worst shark attacks ever recorded serve to remind us just how impressive these oceanic predators really are. Before we get started, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can keep up to date with all our latest and most exciting content. Okay. Randy Fry. Randy Fry was Randy out Fry. With a friend on a diving trip not okay. too far off the coast of Mendocino, California, back Ooh. in 2004, when his life was forever changed in an instant. The pair were enjoying their time below the waves, See, and their day out turned into a nightmare. They ended up face to face with a very aggressive great white shark that was intent on taking a big bite out of the two swimmers. It wasted no time swimming right up to them, attacking Fry without missing a beat. His friend Cliff Zimmerman took off at that point, struggling to see where he was, going through all the blood that had suddenly filled the water around him. He later said that he heard a strange whooshing sound as the shark approached to attack the men, and before he knew it, he was swimming in a red-tinted sea. Zimmerman managed to swim to safety, reaching the shore before realizing that Fry hadn't made it out alive. He called 911 to report the attack, and the rescue team that was sent out to look for Fry's body managed to recover it the next day, and the autopsy revealed that the shark had managed to bite his head clean off his shoulders. The coroner came Damn. to the conclusion that it was a great white that had attacked the pair of unlucky swimmers by measuring and studying the bite marks. Terry Manuel. Damn. Terry Manuel was a massive fan of diving, and had See, spent his white. life diving in all sorts of exotic locations. All right. Of scuba ended up causing He's going to exotically bite your ass, too. 1974, when he was out diving with a friend of his in southern Australia, they weren't too far off the coast when they hopped into the water and began swimming around underneath the waves. Now, what are y'all niggas the doing? The was cut short, however, when Manuel and his friend Talbot noticed something very large approaching them at an impressive clip. They couldn't make out the shape until it got close enough to strike with Talbot realizing too late that he was staring down a massive great white shark. The shark latched onto Manuel and tried to swim away with him, but Talbot was able to free his friend from the shark's jaws. Talbot also managed to scare the shark off after its attack, giving him enough time to try to get Manuel to safety. Unfortunately, the shark had been moving very quickly when he attacked Manuel, moving at an estimated 25 miles per hour. Damn. The injuries he sustained when he was hit by the shark along with the bite wounds he received were too much for him to recover from and he bled out before he was able to get back to shore Damn. david lillianfeld another white man with his entire life ahead of him 
David Lilienfeld was fatally attacked by a shark when he was on a trip. I promise you, every single one of these niggas is why. He had traveled to South Africa with a group of fellow surfers and was busy enjoying epic conditions at Cold Bay. And another thing is like, dude. Oh my gosh, damn it. Another thing is sure. like, dude, hold up, man. Another thing is like, dude, like, notice how all of these niggas that they're naming are just like in the most rural, like, exotic spots. Like, this nigga said he was in Australia. This dude is in South Africa. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what, what are y'all doing in these waters? You know what I'm saying? Why are you guys in these exotic foreign waters? You know? Like, you couldn't, you, you know what I'm saying? It's one thing to just be in the ocean super deep down, diving around, messing around in the shark's territories, like, in the first place. But then you're going to go somewhere like South Africa and then uh, Australia, like, where that's most notorious to have, like, the killer animals, and you out there messing around in their territory. I low-key don't blame the sharks for beating y'all ass. You know what I'm saying? That's kind of like a nigga coming inside of your crib, right? And... You know, you you gonna you gonna retaliate. Imagine a nigga coming up in your territory. Okay, imagine if a shark came on our land. Imagine if sharks came up and just start swimming around in our land. Right? We not gonna mess with that nigga. We probably gonna jump his ass and kill him. Right? That's exactly what you niggas is doing to them. Get out of their crib, bro. You know what I'm saying? You're not supposed to be over there, bro. And these niggas keep playing with them, bro. Traveled to South Africa with a group of fellow surfers and was busy enjoying epic conditions at Cold Bay, which is a bit of a surfing and bodyboarding hotspot. Lillian Feld was messing around on a bodyboard while everyone else chilled out in the water around him, when all of a sudden, he let out a terrifying scream before disappearing under the waves. The rest of the group immediately tried to help Lillian Feld and get out of the water themselves. The shark had grabbed him by his right leg and was busy shaking him back and forth viciously during the entire attack. It Damn. finally let him go, allowing rescuers to pull him onto the rocks and administer first aid. These efforts were futile, and the shark had already done too much damage to save Lillian Feld's life. Damn. The shark then continued to swim back and forth just off the rocks in a very aggressive manner for around a half hour before it finally swam off and disappeared before it could be captured and killed. Todd Endress, another lifelong fan of the ocean who ended up being caught in a... Oh, I didn't nigga pose like that. I just realized that. Come on, Gordon. No one wants to see y'all bad. Shark attack is Todd Endress, who, unlike the first white. victims, managed to survive his ordeal and lived to tell people about his attack. Things probably wouldn't have ended quite so well if he hadn't been saved by a group of dolphins who managed to fight off the 15-foot great white shark that had attacked him. Damn. This all went down back in Some real nigga stuff, man. At Monterey Bay's Marina State Beach. And there was no prior warning before the shark grabbed a hold of him and tried to do him in. Only a few seconds after the attack began, a pod of dolphins that was seemingly swimming by at the right time stepped in and began beating the shark back, giving Endress just enough time to make it to shore before the shark circled around for another attack. Endress ended up being torn apart in no small way, requiring 500 stitches Damn. and 200 staples just to patch up the massive wound that the shark had left. Uh, he don't look that bad. At least, at least he doesn't look. At least he's not like messed up for life. To plenty of news outlets and even having a segment on the Discovery Channel, thanks to his close encounter with one of nature's most fearsome aquatic predators. I know that hurt though. Andrus did finally succumb to injuries he received in a car crash in 2016. Mick Fanning. Mick Fanning was a professional surfer and quite influential figure in his chosen sport when he was attacked halfway through a live competition in South Africa. Another his white. His entire attack was caught on live camera, and the competition was put on hold in the aftermath of the notorious incident. Many onlookers and witnesses say that it was one of the most terrifying things they've ever seen, and that they felt totally helpless while watching Fanning try to fend off his attacker. Fanning ended up not sustaining any injuries at all when the shark decided to have a go at him. Thanks to some very quick thinking on his part, he somehow managed to get his board in between himself and the shark, allowing him to reach over top of the board to punch the shark in the back. His own attack caused the shark to swim away, giving Fanning enough time to get out of the water and back to safety. The event was, as you can well imagine, shut down after the attack, and Fanning will go down in history 
as being a total badass. Yeah, Before facts. I was just about to say it. Damn, damn, okay. My nigga took it upon himself. He said, all right, damn, this is this shark want smoke? All right, man, I'm about to jump on your back. <laughs> nigga. And the nigga just swam away. That's some, And he came out unscathed? Man, that's some real nigga stuff, bro. Hey, you know, I wouldn't advise you to take your white ass back out there, but hey, you a real nigga for getting out of it. For real. That's crazy. You socked the shark in the back? <laughs> you must you must hit really hard, bro. Because them sharks is strong as hell. I feel like they would have ate that lick. You know what I'm saying? This nigga just tried to punch me in the back. <laughs> but he ran away? Is that like a, a shark's like weak spot or something? I'm assuming he know that. Because he probably has to know the risks if he's a you know surfer. Of sharks, you know, I would I would assume he's at least prepared of, of what to do if a shark come bite his ass, you know. But hey, kudos to him for getting away. Camera and came out on top. If Fanning hadn't acted so quickly, things could have easily taken a turn for the worse. And his quick thinking that day probably saved his life, along with the lives probably? of his fellow surfers. Elio Canestri. Oh God. Elio Canestri was an up and coming. We have a young white who was only 13 years old when he was tragically attacked and killed by a shark. Having dreams of being a pro surfer, Canestri knew that shark attacks were a real problem for people in his position and had previously told his mother that he'd only go out surfing if he had people spotting for sharks at the same time. He kept his word, but his spotters ended up missing a shark that swam right up to Canestri when he was doing his thing one day. The shark bit him right in his right arm and also managed to get a large portion of his stomach. Canestri didn't stand much of a chance after an attack like that, and he bled to death long before a rescue boat was able to make it to him in order to bring him back to shore to Damn. receive medical attention. This all happened just off the coast of Reunion Island, which has since been declared off limits due to it being an unsafe spot for surfers. Lots Thanks. of attacks have occurred along this stretch, and the authorities have rightfully decided that it's better to be safe than sorry in the future. With Elio Canestri's death being a driving factor behind their ultimate. Look at this random ass kid. Ugh, get your ugly ass on, bro. Ugh. Back up, man. Damn. Ugly ass picture. When he accidentally crossed paths with an angry 16 foot great white shark. He was diving with Chris Rem, a friend and fellow diver, when the shark appeared out of nowhere, headed straight for Conger. His friend watched helplessly as the shark tossed his friend around underneath the waves and ended up having to swim for his life when the shark suddenly released Conger and made a run at Rem. Conger's friend only just managed to swim to a nearby boat where he was pulled aboard by a buddy mere moments before the shark tore past him. That's when they all tried to reach Conger, finding out too late that he had already died thanks to his very serious <laughs> Why are you laying in the pool like the only that? person to be attacked <sighs> and killed at the very same spot in the same period of time, with another three divers being attacked by great white sharks at that location over the course of a two-week period. Ian Redman. Ian Redman was Ian Redman. his new wife, Gemma Houghton, during their honeymoon in the Damn, that looks bomb. disaster struck. They had been told repeatedly that they didn't have to worry about sharks at all while snorkeling by the locals. See, this is why you don't listen to people, y'all. This is why you do not listen to people like that. By a shark only a few days later when they were snorkeling in relatively shallow water. You ain't got to worry about sharks. How you going to How is you going to tell somebody, you know, you ain't got to worry about sharks around these parts? There's no sharks over here. So you can take your ass down there and go and snorkel and explore all you want. You ain't got to worry about no sharks around these parts. How do you know that? That is the ocean, nigga. You know how big the ocean is? I assume these sharks just don't have cribs that they just chill in and only stay at that crib. They don't got cities, nigga. They don't got blocks. They don't got hoods that they just be in chilling. No, nigga, they be going all over the damn ocean, I assume. And even if not. How do you know a shark just won't pop up one day? How do you know that? This is why you don't listen to niggas, man. Lucky. He was rushed to a nearby hospital, but died in route because he had already lost far too much blood at that point. Houghton later said that the scene has left her permanently traumatized, which is unsurprising as far as we're concerned. Rodney Fox. Rodney Fox now Another has white. a massive scar that takes up most of his torso. Thanks <sighs> to a great white shark attack, 
that left him lucky to be alive. He was a champion spear fisherman and was attacked back in 1963 off the coast of Australia. The wound he was left with is badass to say the least, and it took over 500 stitches to put Fox back together again. His yeah. left side was ripped pretty much wide open, and there's still a piece of a shark tooth embedded in his wrist, which serves as a gruesome reminder of how lucky he is. Fox has gone on to film a number of shark documentaries and made it a lifelong goal to increase our awareness and understanding of sharks and shark attacks. Nigga, what, what awareness, bro? Take it, keep your ass outside of the ocean. Problem solved. What are you talking about? Well, let's raise awareness. But you niggas keep taking your ass back in the ocean. Stay your ass out the goddamn ocean. How about that? Problem solved. Damn, bro. And then, then look, it's another white. I'm done with this video, man. Y'all like the video, man. Make sure you guys subscribe. I'm tired of this, man. I'm tired of this. I love you guys, man. I'll see you guys next video.